you're watching the ACC on ESPN. From Little John Coliseum, it's Clemson and Georgia Tech. And in this building, the Tigers have been a big game hunter. Home wins against Louisville, Florida State, and Duke this season. And tonight, it's senior night for Clemson. They say farewell to three players who've only been in the program for one season. Graduate transfers Tevin Mack, Curran Scott, and Paul Grindy. And Ishraf alongside Malcolm Huckabee. Clemson has been a microcosm of college basketball this year. Some nights it's a Michelin chef cooking a five-star meal. Some nights it's food at a roadside diner with a 78 sanitation rating. Well, I always feel like I'm getting a five-star meal sitting next to you, in East, but you're right. Clemson has had an up-and-down season, but they've done something that teams have not done this year in college basketball. They have three wins over top six opponents in college basketball. Florida State, Duke, and Louisville. Clemson holds wins against those schools, and it's simple. It's March right now. If you win, you advance. They want to get a home win here before they head down to Greensboro for the ACC tournament. Brad Brownell earlier this season became the winningest head coach in Clemson history. And on the other sideline, Josh Pastner. This is Georgia Tech's final game of the season. They accepted a postseason ban on Monday, dropping their appeal to the NCAA. So no NCAA tournament, no NIT, no ACC tournament. But they have a chance to win 11 league games and finish with a winning conference record. They have not had a winning ACC record since the 0-4 team that played for a national championship. Well, a lot on the line tonight, Clemson. Uh, we talked about uh, their resume, but uh, they certainly need to get a home win and get some momentum going into the ACC tournament. And a big key in this game uh, for Georgia Tech, defending the three-point line. Clemson likes to shoot a lot of them. In the first meeting, Clemson just 2 of 20 from 3 against Georgia Tech, and that was a 68-59 Yellow Jackets win. Georgia Tech has been one of the hottest teams down the stretch in the ACC, led by an outstanding backcourt, Jose Alvarado and Michael DeVoe. And there's the USC transfer, Jordan Usher. Well, you are right, and they are playing some fantastic ball, a team that uh, has some balance, but they're led by uh, their backcourt, DeVoe and Alvarado. And certainly that's going to be a focal point for Clemson in this game. Georgia Tech looking to run. They turn it over. Now Clemson will push. Amir Sims, one of the most versatile big men in the ACC. Missing down low, the rebound to DeVoe. One of the top three-point shooters in the conference. Alvarado, stutter step. Left hand, it's not there. Sims the rebound. Alvarado had 19 in the first meeting. Mack for three. And Clemson has missed its first three from downtown. This is a team that almost takes half of his shots in league play from deep. Yeah, really, in their last game, a loss uh, versus Virginia Tech. Uh, they shot 35 threes in that game, 9 to 35 uh, in that game. So, again, uh, they are going to live by the three. And uh, as you said, they are better at home, but starting off cold from beyond the arc. Usher misfires. 35 three-point attempts, 22 two-point attempts in that game as Mack is fouled. Moses Wright picks up the foul. Now the big question for Clemson, what do they have to do to get back onto the bubble? We mentioned the big wins. Louisville, Duke, Florida State. As Mack fighting down low. And another whistle. Banks picks up his first. But there's also a lot of scars, Malcolm, on this Clemson resume. Overall, 15 and 14, 9 and 10 in league play. And yes, they have the big wins, but they lost to Miami and Wake Forest and Virginia Tech. And not long ago to this Georgia Tech team. Yeah, and I think, you know, again, that's the debate as we get into March. Uh, we talk about big wins, quad win wins, and obviously Clemson has a good as good argument as anybody in college basketball uh, with they, what they've been able to do against top five, top six opponents in the country. So 
Uh, but you're right. Uh, there have been some bruises along the way. And uh, tonight is important. Uh, it's very important for them to have, obviously, uh, some momentum going into the ACC tournament because I think they have some work to be done if they want to get back into uh, that discussion of being one of those teams that could potentially get into the dance. Amir Sims getting the Tigers on the board. Ushers knocked down a three. And he hits over Curran Scott. Usher with all five for the Yellow Jackets. Malcolm defensively, what's the challenge when facing Georgia Tech? Well, the big thing what they do is, is they have one of the premier shot blockers, James Banks. Uh, we're going to get into his story a little bit. Um, but he provides great rim protection right there. You see uh, going up against Amir Sims. Now, he didn't get the block, but he bothered that shot. So I think he has been uh, one of the biggest uh, factors for the improved Georgia Tech defense. Clemson still looking for its first field goal, 0 for 6. Newman, it's now 0 for 7. Moses right, the long two, not there. And the rebound pulled down by Clyde Trapp, the junior, who missed the beginning of the season coming off a torn ACL. Clemson now 0 for 8. And early on in these, what Georgia Tech is doing, they're contesting shots. It's not that Clemson's getting open looks. Everything has been contested by Georgia Tech. Usher to the 10 and draws the foul. It's on trap. Well, Jordan Usher has started this game off very aggressive on the offensive end. Hit a jumper that time, little head fake, great patience, and then getting to the free throw line. A transfer from USC. He came to Clemson last, or I should say he came to Georgia Tech last January. He had to sit out the fall semester. And a challenge for both of these coaches has been you know, getting roster continuity. Alvarado missed time early in the season. You have to work Usher back into the lineup. Clemson has dealt with a number of injuries. Trap coming back. Hemingway missed a lot of time. So you're basically coaching different versions of your team until you settle on a solution. Yeah, both these teams, as you take a look at the injury bug uh, for Clemson, that's a lot of missed time. Uh, and at times, it's been difficult for them to field the practice squad because uh, so many guys have been out with injuries. So and certainly both these teams and coaches managing it as well as possible. Tigers still without a bucket. 0 for 9 from the field. It's been the Usher Show for Georgia Tech early, and the Yellow Jackets on the road looking to close the season with a win, have an early 7-2 lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. Brad Brownell's team looking to play itself back onto the bubble. Joey Brackets, where's Clemson? And East Clemson's NCAA hopes probably died in Blacksburg earlier in the week, but certainly a win in this finale would get him to 500 in the ACC. I don't think 500 in the ACC is good enough this year. They're going to need this game and at least two more, probably three, in the ACC tournament just to be a serious part of the conversation. We'll see if they can get there. Anish? Well, thanks, Joe. And I, I really, I would agree with that. I think, you know, if you're talking about a quad one wins and, and big wins, Clemson uh, has as good as argument as anybody in college basketball, not just the ACC, uh, but they still have some work uh, to be done in the ACC tournament, but it starts tonight at home to close out the season. If you lose tonight, that might be the difference between having to win the ACC tournament and getting the AQ versus having to win enough just to get to that championship game, and that's a big difference. I, I think it's huge. Uh, again, you're right. Uh, it, you go from, obviously, if you take care of business tonight at home to potentially being in the conversation with two wins, 
Uh, but if they lose at home, obviously now you're talking about potentially having to run the table uh, down at the ACC tournament uh, to get into the dance. Uh, with Georgia Tech ineligible for the tournament, Clemson is guaranteed of a first-round bye, but that still takes four wins in four days to win the whole thing. High flying Moses Wright will go to the free throw line. He has been one of the great success stories for Josh Pastner and this Georgia Tech program. A zero star recruit. He was not an ACC player when he first arrived on campus. And now here he is as a junior, averaging 13 a game. And we spoke with Josh Pastner about this. And it's one of the things that coaches rave about. It's one thing to bring in a guy that you're expecting. Uh, big thing from uh, it's another where nobody was expecting anything from him and uh, it's a testament to uh, Josh Pastor and the coaching staff developing him he just continued to get better and uh, as you said turned into a legit ACC player Clemson still searching for that first field goal Sims great feed down low to Mac and that's what Amir Sims does so well one of the best passing bigs, not just in the ACC, but in the country. Uh, every coach uh, that you talk to that goes up against Clemson will say that. Uh, he really is like a three-man uh, trapped in a 4 5 body. He does a great job setting up his teammates for some open looks. Devoe, normally a marksman when he's that open. Usher the offensive rebound and called for the offensive foul. What a sequence by Amir Sims. Uh, the beautiful pass, and then that time taking a charge. And that's the sense of urgency Anish, that Clemson needs in this game right here, those little things. Uh, yes, you want the production offensively, but it's going to start with them defensively, those type plays. Uh, that's how you win ball games and get yourself uh, out of the shooting funk. funk. Bubba Parham, Khalid Moore, Evan Cole all checking in for Georgia Tech. Right now, Georgia Tech showing a little 1-3-1. One, one. Alamir Dawes, the hero of that Florida State win. Scott lost it, but drew the foul. And that's how you want to attack the 1-3-1 one, one zone. Don't settle for jumpers. Heads up play that time by current Scott. And... Uh, that's something we saw them work on uh, at shoot-around early this morning. Uh, they knew there was the potential for Georgia Tech to change up their defense. Uh, that time going to 1-3-1, and uh, that's specifically what Brad Brownell talked about, which is don't settle for jumpers. Try to drive the ball to the gaps. See if either you can set up a teammate or get yourself to the free throw line. A breather for Amir Sims. Scott, a grad transfer from Tulsa. 30... 44% uh, from three last year for the Golden Hurricane. Bubba Parham, the VMI transfer. Now it's Khalid Moore. Shot clock at 10. Alvarado along three. The rebound to Trey Jemison. Got passed on the three from the elbow. It's good. And a one-point game. Now that's twice now. Current Scott showing patience. Not settling for a three again. Dribble drive under control. Beautiful pull-up jumper. Excellent offense by Clemson. Moore from the outside. Great feed, Scott to Jemison. Little give and go. You can't execute the slip of screen any better than that. Pass was on point. All he had to do was catch and then throw it down. Stolen away. Here comes Alamir Dawes, and he lost it. It will stay with Clemson, knocked out by Alvarado. Right here, take a look at. Beautiful offense, and then this one coming right at you. Monster jam. All set up, though, by excellent ball movement, and then that time heads-up play by the big to slip the screen.
Well, we've seen now, Anisha, in this last stretch of possessions for Clemson, uh, them being better on the offensive side, and I think it starts with their spacing, and then their guys are doing some nice job of passing against this Georgia Tech zone. Georgia Tech wanted to travel, but Mack draws the foul. First on Khalid Moore. That's his first 15 foul. Tevin Mack, an Alabama transfer. He began his career actually at Texas two seasons in Austin. Was the Longhorns' leading scorer in his final season there. Hey, a couple of big games tomorrow. Regular season winding down. Number one, Kansas taking on Texas Tech in Lubbock. And then at six in the ACC, Carolina Duke part two. Folks, UNC is coming, averaging 90 points in the last three games. They've won all three of those, and there may not be a more dangerous double-digit seed in the history of the ACC tournament. <laughs> and I would agree with you wholeheartedly on that one right there. And, you know, obviously they've uh, dealt with all the injuries, uh, but anytime you get those two teams together, uh, obviously it's always fun. And then uh, that's the beauty of college basketball in March. Anything can happen in the ACC tournament. Mack contested. Tevin Mack from the outside on senior night. First three of the game for Clemson. They live and die with that shot. Well, they're going to keep taking them, and that one wide open, again, off of excellent spacing and ball movement. Georgia Tech needs to do a better job contesting. Evan Cole, just 4 of 20 from 3, now 4 of 21. Mack again. Knocks it down. He had a big game, 32 against Syracuse. He can get hot. Uh, he is definitely capable of lighting it up. And right now, uh, on fire, the last two possessions. And Clemson credit them. They're doing a nice job finding him. Moore looking for help. Leans in. It's not there. And a foul down low. Clemson in the midst of a 9-0 run to take the lead. Tevin Mack with a big hand in that. And the hot hand from the outside. This is what the ACC tournament would look like if it started today. Now, Florida State, Virginia, Louisville, and Duke, they've all locked up double buys. Clemson has locked up a first-round buy, and as of now, they would get Boston College in that second-round game. If you're wondering where's Georgia Tech, well, on Monday, Georgia Tech dropped its appeal and accepted the NCAA's postseason ban, so Georgia Tech will not even take part in the ACC tournament. Tonight, in fact, is their final game of the season. Had their appeal been denied, Georgia Tech could have been banned from postseason play next year, but by accepting the ban and dropping the appeal, Tech is eligible for the postseason next year. couple of items to note. Georgia Tech is still appealing to scholarship reductions and limitations on official visits. And Josh Passner was not directly named in both the NCAA's findings, and he was also largely cleared in the school's investigation. And I think for Clemson, you look at that 8-9 game as Karen Scott continues to play some good ball for Clemson. Uh, Clemson's already faced Boston College on the 22nd as we take a look again at Karen Scott. Again, I like how he's not settling for jumpers. Good body control and finish. Uh, but go back to February 22nd, Clemson at Boston College. They had a convincing 82-64 They win. couldn't miss. No, so it's... 69% from the field. <laughs> they control right now uh, their, if you will, destiny. Again, it's simple. If you win a couple of games, starting with here, 
uh, at home, and then you go down the ACC tournament and have a good showing. Uh, their argument is as good as anybody's as co in college. Michael DeVoe hits the three. And again, to put a period on the Georgia Tech story, the appeal, the postseason ban, all that stems from major recruiting violations against former assistant Daryl LeBerry and Passner's ex-friend Ron Bell. Mack misfires. Tigers have been much better after an 0 for 9 start from the field. DeVoe, the sophomore from Orlando. You can dream on this Georgia Tech team next year, especially with that backcourt of DeVoe and Alvarado, but here DeVoe turns it over. Trap pushing. Trap gets it back from Newman. Rebound, Jemison. And those offensive rebounds are big for Clemson. This is a team that lacks physicality. It's not a great rebounding team. They have to make shots, but if you give them second chances, now you give them room for error. And Trap makes Georgia Tech pay. Second chance opportunity. You're absolutely right, Anish. Anytime you're playing against any team, you give up uh, extra opportunities. Uh, typically, that team is going to make you pay. And Excellent job getting an extra possession that time on the offensive glass for Clemson. DeVoe called for an offensive foul. Right here again, uh, the lost art of screening. Uh, that's a beautiful screen right there. And, you know, Nish, we talk about a lot of things in basketball, but getting back to the fundamentals, passing, and I think one of the things we don't talk about quite often enough, setting good screens. It's so important to free up either dribblers or guys coming off pin downs. Last year's national champion, Virginia, had one of the best screen setters in the country, Jack Salt. And that was a big part of their offensive success. Doesn't show up in the box score. His numbers weren't gaudy. Banks. Nice move. Slithering inside. Well, one of the premier shot blockers right now second in the ACC in blocks per game. That time given a nice offensive boost and one of the great stories, something we're going to get in later. Uh, give you a reason to chair for Georgia Tech and James Bank. Really a remarkable story of perseverance uh, that he and his family have endured. He is Mr. Popularity in Atlanta. They call him the mayor. Usher, no. As opposed to, yeah. There's a few yeahs, right? Jemison on the low block. Left hand not there. Rebound to Moses Wright. Nearly lost it. That's a nice block out, though, and recovery by Wright. Another lost art blocking out. Two things you typically don't hear uh, in a broadcast. Setting screens and then the guys blocking out and going and getting a rebound. What year is this? <laughs> Wright rims out. And a loose ball to Scott. Tigers going timeout. Timeout by Clemson. 6.53 to go in the opening half. Mr. Banks dipping into his vast wardrobe of low post moves. James Banks is always smiling despite personal tragedy. When he was four, his father was killed in a motorcycle accident. His mom, Sonia, raised James and his older this sister. The she's had in my life. This is the role that she's had in my life to build me up as a man and who I am today. I mean, you can see, if you know her, you see a lot of her in me. And, you know, being able to take care of her, I just want the best for her. Honestly, you know, that's, and, and that's all I can say. I, I want the best for her. I want, you know, the easiest, everything for her. I want her to be able to enjoy her life to, the, like, to its fullest because I have the capability to do that for her. And knowing that, you know, that just drives me more. Now, his mom, Sonia, raised James and his sister, Marissa, and Sonia was paralyzed in a car accident when James was a junior in high school. 
It really was. And, you know, he said, look, we had a good cry when it first happened. Uh, here's a picture of James and his mother, Sonia, on senior night. And, uh, you know, he said, look, um, she is not the woe is me. She's a very religious person. Um, he talked to her daily about uh, getting through this. He said we were going to get this through this together. And he promised her uh, that he would graduate from college. He fulfilled that uh, there on senior night. He is going to graduate um, but uh, certainly uh, he talks about his mother and her strength. He said she is the strongest woman uh, that I know. And uh, obviously going through personal tragedy like that, uh, he said, look, I've never uh, since that accident seen her uh, without a smile on her face. And you heard in that soundbite how James says, you see her in me. We were talking to Josh Pastner earlier. He told us that Banks is the mayor around the Georgia Tech campus and with a lot of the team staffers, not the players, the team staffers, he's the president of the UNO club. He'll come in and he'll play UNO every day with everybody or anybody who wants to in the team office, in the facilities. He's somebody people gravitate to, and Pastner would kid around with him. You know, you could run for governor one day, but then, you know, 50% of the people by default may not like you. <laughs> it's really just a remarkable story, and, you know, Sonia, I know if you're uh, watching this game. Job well done with that young man. Uh, future very bright for him. Future's bright for that one too. Jose Alvarado he's the team's leading scorer in conference games at 16 per. Two point lead for the Yellow Jackets. A 7-0 run for Tech. Newman trying to weasel out of the corner. Dawes Ill-advised. DeVoe off the handoff from Alvarado. Smooth. Well, his last 10 ACC games, he's been averaging 15 points a game and shooting 48% from the three-point line. Uh, I would say uh, that young man, Michael DeVoe, has been on fire uh, from beyond the arc for Georgia Tech. Five to shoot. Newman the turnaround. And that stops a 10-0 Georgia Tech run. Shot clock at five. Alvarado down the lane and drew the contact. We were talking earlier. How much fun is Jose Alvarado to watch? Junior from Christ the King High School in Brooklyn. New York City kid, and there's a great tradition of New York City point guards here. And their offense is completely different with him out there. He's missed a lot of time early on in the season for Georgia Tech. Uh, but you can see they are such a different team with him out there. And uh, you mentioned that Brooklyn connection. Uh, he passed Kenny Anderson's record, uh, which was held up until Alvarado broke it this year against NC State with nine steals. Previously, uh, Kenny Anderson, uh, the great point guard for Georgia Tech, had eight steals. That was a, a season record and single game record for steals in a game. Uh, Alvarado had nine versus NC State this year. And. Uh, what a career he has had uh, for Georgia Tech. Anderson, Marbury, both New York City point guards who came to Tech. And there's Hemingway, the freshman from Indiana. His return has really opened things up for Clemson and made them an even better three-point shooting team. And that's an area, though, that they've continued to work with him on, that mid-range floater game, because teams now, because of his three-point shooting, are running him off the three-point line. That's a beautiful floater and finish. Small lineup on the floor for Clemson. Alvarado, Bubba Parham over Jemison using the window. Bank open late on a Friday. You can't play better defense if you're Clemson. That's just a tough shot over two guys. And you said it. That's off glass from a difficult angle. Stop. 
Clemson just 2 of 10 from 3. They were 2 for 20 in the first meeting against Georgia Tech. A loss. Alvarado tried to force it. Turns it over. Two and a half to go in this opening half. Hemingway. Lost it. A lot of contact. No whistle. DeVoe nearly traveled and lays it in with the left. Silky Might have gotten smooth. away with one, though. That's silky smooth right there, though. The steal and then the ability to defend off the defender and finish that time. DeVoe. That's a tough finish. DeVoe all over Newman. And Newman. Is called for the offensive foul. Tech turning up the defensive pressure. DeVoe on the hands team. Puts it in for two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Heineken Zero. Now you can. If Georgia Tech wins tonight, the Yellow Jackets would finish 11-9 in the ACC. It would be Georgia Tech's first winning record in conference since the 4 team went 9-7, and, and that team reached the championship. The last time they won 11 or more games in league play, you got to go back to the 95-96 season. That's when Stephon Marbury was running point, Drew Barry, Matt Harpering. That team went 13-3 in conference and reached the Sweet 16, knocking off Malcolm Huckabee's BC Eagles along the way. You were, you were gone by then. You were though. just waiting to add that one in. I'm going to tell you, you Syracuse guys are something else, but uh, what a squad that was. Uh, Steph Marbury, one of the all-time greats uh, in Georgia Tech history. and uh, You're right, it's been a really good uh, season for Georgia Tech, and they have a chance uh, to get back and do something they have not done in a very long time. They've got a lot coming back last year, although they have to find a way to replace James Banks in the middle. And that's going to be, I think, the key uh, to keep that defense the way they have. Uh, performed this year, but Curran Scott uh, on senior night has put on a show well, with his mid-range game. Again, not settling. And Georgia Tech's got to do a better job closing out. Right now, they're over-committing, and now he's allowing him to get into his mid-range or all the way to the basket. Scott's got nine. Parham off the bounce. Gets the bounce. Or rather, Usher, excuse me. That's just a strong individual play that time. Good strength and body control. Usher in the passing lane, and Mack got him from behind. And that's two now on Tevin Mack. So foul trouble starting to add up for Clemson. Mack's got two. Newman's got two. Amir Sims on the bench with two. And right now what Clemson needs to do is use the ball fake or backdoor cuts or slips of screen because right now Georgia Tech is really active and aggressive in the passing lane so uh, they got to be careful with their passes and either ball fake or uh, go back door yeah they're going to look to see if this was an intentional foul and a correction that is just one on mac well there's no doubt uh, whether or not it was intentional or not i think it's just more how bad yeah i mean yeah, look, that's, that's an intentional foul I mean, he's grabbing him that's not a basketball it's play. Not a play on the ball no he's grabbing his shorts trying to uh, break up a clear fast break. So the explanation we just got uh, from uh, head official Jamie Lucky was uh, that he bumps first. So we're going to call that first one. Uh, but he clearly grabbed them afterwards. Uh, that's the uh, explanation we got. So we're going to call the first foul, which was the bump. So. Uh, if you will, a heads-up play by Tevin Mack uh, to bump first, and that's the one they called and uh, certainly broke up a 
Sure, uncontested layup. So Usher, a Georgia kid who began his career at USC, hits the front end of a one and one, and Georgia Tech now nine for nine at the free throw line. They've got a 10 point lead on the each rate halftime report. A big breakdown in the Pac 12. And also, we'll get you set for Saturday. Kansas, Texas Tech, UNC Duke, part two. 11 point lead for the Yellow Jackets, their largest of the game. And Clemson will hold for one. Alamir Dawes, the freshman. Scott in trouble. And the three no good for Sims as time expires. An impressive first half on the road for Georgia Tech. They've got an 11 point lead. Clemson's had a few comebacks this season. They're going to need another one to pull this one off. The halftime report comes your way after this. Georgia Tech looking to spoil senior night for Clemson and the Yellow Jackets. Have an 11 point halftime lead here at Little John Coliseum and Ishraf Malcolm Huckabee. Michael DeVoe has turned into one of the best guards in the ACC. He's one of the best shooters in this league. A terrific first half for the Yellow Jackets. His last 10 games in these uh, ACC games, he's averaging 15 points and shooting 48% from the three-point line. Uh, he has been on fire. You are absolutely right. Showing off the complete game after the three, coming up with the steal and beautiful finish. Uh, he has been playing as good as anybody in the ACC. I think the pleasant surprise, though, Jordan Usher, uh, the USC transfer, uh, had himself a first half, came into this game averaging eight points. He has 11 in the first half. Uh, he has given them a big boost. Uh, but for Clemson, it has been the seniors. Uh, Kern Scott showing off the mid-range game that time. Great body control and one. And then Tevin Mack, the other senior uh, for Clemson, uh, was able to get hot from the three-point line, trying to keep Clemson in this game. But they're going to need more of this in the second half to get back into this game. DeVoe with 10 points. Usher with 11 for Georgia Tech. Mack and Scott, nine apiece for Clemson. The Tigers just 2 of 10 from three-point range in that first half. And this season against Georgia Tech, they're 3 for 30 from distance. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, the key. Uh, that number is going to have to go up uh, in this game. Uh, as you said, in that first half, really struggled from beyond the arc. Uh, 2 of 11, 18%. And uh, credit Georgia Tech. They contested a lot of those threes. There were not many open looks for Clemson in the first half. A trap pulls down the rebound off the DeVoe miss. Amir Sims has been quiet so far. Hits the three. Had some foul trouble in the first half that limited his minutes. He's Clemson's leading scorer. Uh, they're coachable. <laughs> I said, look, they're going to have to knock down some threes. And I think how they get their threes, that's all set up by Clyde Trapp. Heads up play. Beautiful find for Amir Sims. Sims again, lost it. Alvarado the steal. Alvarado out of control. And that is a traveling violation. Well, a lot of contact after the Alvarado steal. And Josh Pastner and the coaching staff wanted a foul on Amir Sims. And clearly that was one. Looks like uh, Clemson got away with one, but... Again, when you're playing Georgia Tech, you're going to have to use ball fakes. Uh, Alvarado leads the ACC in steals per game, and uh, he does a great job playing the passing lanes. It's a Clemson team that has had a knack for comebacks this season. Did it against Florida State last weekend. And Dawes hits the three, 39-34. And on the flip side, Georgia Tech on the road blew an 11-point halftime lead against both Syracuse and Louisville. They led by 11 tonight against Clemson at the half. All set up right here, though, starting with their defense, and then Clyde Trapp again. The beautiful find. Clemson starting to heat up from beyond the arc.
And Ishraf Malcolm Huckabee with you. Producer Rick Angelo up to his old tricks. Little match game here. Number two, I got a feeling that's Clemson with the three AP top ten wins. I'm going to go with that guess as well, too. Who's one and three? I, you know what? I don't have a clue. That is uh, – actually, I'm very curious. And, wow. I mean, look, uh, we talked about it at the tip. And if there's anybody that has an argument uh, to get into the NCAA tournament, uh, look, Clemson, uh, they've done something that, quite frankly, not too many teams have done. Uh, wins against top six opponents – and that is just uh, really an impressive resume they have put together. I don't think too many people would have guessed those other two teams. You take a look at these resumes right here. Rutgers on the left. In the middle, you have Clemson. And then on the right side, Michigan. And, you know, look, there's this debate about ACC, uh, Big Ten. Uh, hard to argue uh, when you're just going off those two resumes that Clemson is not deserving. Uh, as those other two teams uh, that are probably locked for the NCAA tournament. Amir Sims just picked up his third foul. He heads to the bench. I look at the ACC. I see three teams that have a chance to maybe win the whole thing in Louisville, Duke, and Florida State. I also think the NCAA tournament should be about who you can beat. And to me, that's Clemson's greatest argument. If you beat up on lesser teams, I understand that. You may not have any great wins and you don't have any great scars. But at the end of the day, if you're putting a team into the NCAA tournament, they should be able to beat somebody. Go back to a few years ago when Syracuse was a 10 seed. A lot of scars on that resume. But in the regular season, they had shown that they could beat teams. Mm. And they end up making a run all the way to the Final Four. This Clemson team has shown that it can beat teams. They've had a ton of injuries this year. The group as currently constituted, has won four of its last six. Are they inconsistent as we get a foul on a three-point shot? Yes. Are they mercurial away from Little John Coliseum? Yes. But those three trophy heads they have, Louisville, Duke, and Florida State, that ranks up with anybody. There's work to be done. If they get in and it's one of those nights where they're making three-pointers, I wouldn't want to play Clemson if they're a double-digit seed in March. I mean, this is one of the beauties of March Madness, but also one of the sad things because every year we have this discussion as we get closer to Selection Sunday uh, and to conference uh, tournaments, uh, teams that are on that bubble. And you look at uh, the body of work, and obviously uh, there's no doubt uh, with all the uh, predictions out there, we've had Joey Brackett's on earlier in the broadcast. Uh, Clemson has some work. Uh, to be uh, done uh, in this home game here, but then obviously when they get down to Greensboro uh, for the ACC tournament. Alvarado just one of three at the line. Having said all that, if you're Clemson and your case is we're a better team of late than we've been early in the season because now we have our team, then you can't lose tonight. No, it's simple as that. I mean, look, there's, there's no way they can uh, go into the ACC tournament and have a loss at home and expect to have any momentum uh, going into that tournament. So you're right. This is uh, a must win uh, for them prior to getting down to Greensboro. If they lose tonight, I really think it comes down to you're going to have to go to Greensboro and get the AQ, and that's winning four games in four days. You win tonight, you may still have to do that. But I think now you at least put margin of error in play. And if you win that second round game and then you beat one of the top teams in the quarterfinals and then again win in the semis and you get to the championship, even if you lose, now they're talking about you in that committee room on Selection Sunday. And again, Clemson has wins over uh, these three teams at the top, Florida State, Louisville, and Duke. And uh, at Virginia, they lost uh, by seven. Two on the shot clock for Georgia Tech. Brad Brownell trying to get his team's attention to let them know Tech only has two seconds. Usher to inbound. DeVoe, and that's a shot clock violation. Well, good job by Tevin Mack, not fouling in that situation. I knew that there was only two seconds left, 
Obviously, you don't want them to catch the ball underneath there, but again, heads up play by not fouling and compounding, allowing the guy to cut in front of you to get underneath the basket. Ten turnovers for Georgia Tech. That's been an issue this season. And a foul on Alvarado, his second. Georgia Tech with an eight-point lead, 42-34. Media timeout at Little John. Hello, Madness, my old friend. Champ Week right on the horizon, and the ACC tournament will take place in Greensboro. It'll be the 27th time Greensboro will host. Action starts on March 10th with round one on the ACC Network. Duke and Carolina have combined for 39 ACC tournament titles. The rest of the ACC a combined 27. Best time of the year right now as we get to March and the madness. Uh, tonight, though, a lot of work uh, left for Clemson. Uh, we've talked about their resume. And this guy right here, though, James Banks, that's two blocks. Uh, he is one of the premier rim protectors, uh, not just in the ACC, but in the country. Right now, he's second. Only trails Manny Bates. And blocks per game. Scott accelerates. Jemison looking to clean up, and he traveled. Well, James Banks, we talked about his story earlier. Uh, this right here, excellent timing, and then uh, the ability to block the shot, and I think the key thing, keep possession. A lot of times in these, you see guys block it, they punch it out of bounds, give the little Dikembe Mutombo finger wag, but they don't keep possession that time. Blocks it and then keeps possession for his team. That's a great play by James Banks. Clemson has missed eight in a row. Tigers trailed by 11 at the half. Closed to within five. And Sims knocks it down from the outside. And Josh, the deficit back down to five. And Josh Pastner said Amir Sims is one of the most difficult bigs to match up with because he's really a three, uh, but he'll play four and five for Clemson. And because of his ability to knock down threes, that's a tough matchup for James Banks. And he is in there with three fouls. Banks over Mack. And there's Sims. Sims did not have a field goal in that first half. Scott lost it. Tied up. Well, Josh Pastner called Amir Sims a matchup nightmare, and that right there uh, is a tough matchup for any big. Again, he really uh, plays like a point forward for Clemson. They run a lot of their offense through Amir Sims. Uh, he's one of the better passing bigs. And then when he's knocking down threes, he's really difficult to match up against. On cue. Sims has 10. Eight in the second half. Clemson within three. Double Parham. Parham, the Southern Conference scoring champion last year. Alvarado now. Shot clock at five. Parham to Alvarado. Got to put it up. DeVoe looking for right. And that's a shot clock violation. Best defensive possession of the game for Clemson right there. Anish, there was a sense of urgency. You can see the closeouts, and then they finished the playoff, came up with the turnover. Uh, they need that same energy to close this game out. They'll play through Sims again. Amir Sims feeling it. They're giving a little too small that time. They can't guard me in the post. That's just excellent recognition by Clemson of playing the matchup. And we'll get a foul call on Clemson. Uh, 
Harrison started the first half off slow. Uh, he has picked it up. Beautiful entry pass right here. Excellent spacing by Clemson. And Sims takes care of the rest. And then on the other end, yeah, it looks like uh, Kern Scott got him in the face. Now, if he would have just stayed straight up and blocked it and not broken the plane, I think it would have been a clean block. Anytime you come down like that, though, I think the refs are going to make that call. Bubba Parham at the free throw line. A three-point lead for Georgia Tech. And let's see if Clemson continues to ride Amir Sims, who has scored 12 of the Tigers' 13 in the second half. Sims, heat check. And that will be a jump ball, alternating possession, Georgia Tech ball. But I like what Clemson's doing. Smaller defender on him. They put him down in the post. That time, Georgia Tech switches up, puts James Banks on him. They put him in a pick and roll, let him use his perimeter game. Tigers much better from three in the second half as well. That's their bread and butter. A lot of dribbling by Alvarado. Volleyball to Sims and a foul. Third foul on Alvarado, who's the heartbeat of this Georgia Tech team. Excellent team defense that time. Alvarado really nowhere to go. Another great defensive possession that time by Clemson. Here comes Newman. He's had some big games and some of Clemson's big wins this year. Newman driving. And he will shoot two free throws. Sophomore from Greensboro will go home for the ACC tournament. Second foul on DeVoe. Saturday primetime has Steph Curry and the Warriors hosting the 76ers. Steph. 23 points in his first game back from a broken hand. Our coverage tips off with the jump at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. That is tomorrow. Just not fair, that guy, to miss that much time and come back and get buckets the way he does and make it look so easy. Now it's not easy for DeVoe right now. Sandwiched, loose ball. And it belongs to Clemson. Well, the sense of urgency has picked up for Clemson. And you can see they're playing with a lot of energy, getting after it on defense. The Clemson fans are loving it. Right now, Georgia Tech, though, still on top. Clemson has gotten back into this game. All by the play of Amir Sims. 12 points, showing off the versatility. That time, the three. Smaller guy on him, take him down low in the post. Josh Pastner called him one of the most difficult bigs to match up against in the ACC. And you can see why on those last three possessions right there. Uh, really a big reason why Clemson is back in this game. There's a Mitt Taylor, the video coordinator. And when Clemson is clicking offensively, Taylor said they chart passes. When Clemson makes 300 passes in a game, and they chart every single one, they usually win. When they played against Syracuse's zone earlier this year, they had more than 500 passes. The Tigers are heavy into analytics. What don't teams track nowadays? I mean, it's, it's definitely something that coaches, a lot of coaches swear by the analytics. Uh, I think, though, at the end of the day, uh, these players are the ones out there making these plays, and it starts for Clemson with Amir Sims. Uh, we've talked about it. They run their offense uh, through him, really a non-traditional way, acting as a point forward. He has 12 of the 14 for Clemson in the second half. An 11-point halftime lead for Georgia Tech has dwindled to two. Banks turns it over. Yellow Jackets getting back. 
Mack to the basket. Ran into Banks. And Mack is down. We get a foul. A Two foul on James Banks. Banks. Couldn't tell from this angle if it was Tevin Mack who initiated the contact. Again, right here. Oh, he's oh, right in the restricted okay, yeah, area. So he's in the restricted area. So good call by the refs. Excellent position. They're right on top of it. And heads up play, though, by Tevin Mack. Not settling for a jumper right there. Had a clear lane. And James Banks late on the help that time. And Mack at the free throw line. Tied at 44. It took less than nine minutes for Clemson to erase an 11-point halftime deficit. Usher against Mack. Blocked. Two to shoot. Usher puts it up. Batted around to Scott. Clemson pushing. Scott to the 10. The Tigers take the lead. Another turnover. Numbers for Clemson. Newman to Mack. Tevin Mack down low. All set up by Clemson's defense. Uh, they have created offense uh, with excellent defense and then transition offense. They've been unselfish and they're getting high percentage shots. Now they're tough to beat in this building as DeVoe is bumped by Newman. Three on the sophomore. Well, the energy in this building changed, and it started with the defensive end right here, the block. And then they're off to the races. Kerr and Scott having himself a senior night. And then right here, excellent team defense. Tevin Mack, Anish unselfish again. Heads up plays, and they are not settling for jumpers. Uh, they're getting everything going to the basket, but it's starting with their defense. And Georgia Tech more than 10 minutes in without a field goal in the second half. It's been sloppy. Alvarado for three. And there's the first Yellow Jackets field goal since halftime. And I was getting ready to say it. They have zero three-point goal field goals, but uh, Alvarado ended that. And a much-needed three to quiet this crowd. Eight turnovers for Georgia Tech just in this half. And a blocking foul as Alamir Dawes took it strong. It's on DeVoe. And for Michael DeVoe, that's three. Josh Pastner not happy at all. He felt like that foul should have been on the floor. Uh, the ref said it was in the act of shooting. Dawes hits the first free throw. Now let's take another look. Okay, so right here, DeVoe stepping over. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's, yeah, uh, I think a, that frustration yeah. is well-founded. Look, we have the benefit of getting replay. Refs are making that real time, but uh, from that replay, like right there, it looked like uh, he was not in the act of shooting. He got him with the body. Uh, before he went into his shooting motion. DeVoe in the lane, swallowed up. And we're going to get a reach in against Georgia Tech. Moses Wright picks up his second. Well, what Clemson's doing right now, Anish, they're playing great team defense. Again, DeVoe gets by, but then the help is there. You see bodies, three bodies uh, in the way of DeVoe, and they're able to come up with turnovers right now What? Georgia Tech's going to have to do is start kicking the ball out because they're just driving into traffic. Mack off the feed from Sims. 
From down 11 at the break, Clemson up six. And Moses right to the free throw line. Bernice Tevin Mack has some great footwork coming off screens. That time, excellent screen by Amir Sims. Something we talked about, the lost art of setting screens. That time, nice little dribble handoff. Mack came off, got his body squared up, and buried another three. After Wednesday's loss to Virginia Tech, Brad Brownell had choice words for his team. He said, we played poorly. Communication was poor. Mentally, we weren't in the game. His words, we played soft. Mm. And talking to him pregame, he said he had some even harsher words to his team in the locker room. That's just what he told the media. But there needs to be a sense of urgency for Clemson. We didn't see that out of the starting gate. We didn't see that for most of the first half. We've seen it since halftime. And that's the difference in this game right now and a big reason why uh, they're up in this game. Uh, that sense of urgency on the defensive end and a lot of those loose balls. Now Clemson uh, is getting their hands on those. Uh, again, I agree with uh, Coach Brownell. Look, if you don't play with a sense of urgency at this point in the season when you know what's on the line, uh, obviously uh, that's not going to make any coach happy. So they got the message to start off the second half. Scott picks up his second foul. Kayvon Moore gives Mack a breather. There's Moses Wright. Another turnover. Scott drops it off for Moore. DeVoe in traffic. It's a five-point game. Really, turnovers have been the bugaboo for Georgia Tech. They have as many field goal attempts, 10, as turnovers in the second half. Yeah, and that's the problem, uh, the turnovers. Uh, and credit Clemson, they're forcing turnovers, but then they're also getting points off of those turnovers in transition. Scott on the catch and shoot. And Wright tracks it down. You may think the Yellow Jackets have nothing to play for after dropping the repeal of a postseason ban on Monday. This is their final game. No ACC tournament, no NIT, no postseason. But Josh Pastner telling us being above 500 in league play means a lot. Alvarado off the back iron. They have a chance to finish with 11 league wins. That would be the most since Stefan Marbury wore a Georgia Tech uniform. Sims kicks it out toward the Clemson bench. Well, the energy for Clemson, we talked about it. A sense of urgency, getting it done on defense. Kern Scott with the beautiful dish and finish. Clemson up five. Tomorrow night, UFC 248 in Las Vegas. Undefeated middleweight champ Israel Adesanya taking on Yoel Romero. And then Zhang Wei Li defends her strawweight belt on pay-per-view at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. What has changed in the second half for Clemson? Sense of urgency. Yes, we can look at all these numbers, but you talked about it, the message that Brad Brownell gave his team after their loss to Virginia Tech. We're playing soft. We're not playing with the sense of urgency. Uh, it's as simple as that. Defensively, uh, they've gotten after it, and this number right here is key. 23 points off of 17 Tech turnovers, Anish. Uh, that is the story of this game. Alvarado committed his sixth turnover, 11th of the second half, 18th for the game. Trap, uncontested. 
And Josh Pastner signaling to his bench. He's going to call for Evan Cole. Matador defense inside that time by the Yellow Jackets. Well, it seems like everything has opened up in this last five to ten minute stretch. All set up, though, by the defense for Clemson. They're getting high percentage shots. We haven't even talked about three-pointers because they're getting everything going to the basket. It's been a struggle in the half court for Georgia Tech in the second half. Shot clock at two. Alvarado from deep. Front rim. Rebound comes to Dawes. Dawes in transition. The follow by Moore. Rebound to Newman. And Clemson settles. A heads up play that time by Newman. A lot of guys would have tried to put that one back up. And get a fresh shot clock. And get a better look. Trap tied up, and we'll get a foul. Well, we talked about it, the lost art of screening. Amir Sims with another great screen to free up Trap of the hedge and help is late for Georgia Tech. And, you know, again, you see a lot of threes. We've talked about Steph Curry shooting a lot of threes, but how do those guys get open? Uh, somebody has to screen for those guys a lot of times, and, uh, we've seen some great screening in this game, in particular by Amir Sims. One and one for Trap after the third foul on right. Both of these teams, you have to give the coaches credit, really reconfigured their offenses midseason. Yeah, they really have. Injuries, uh, multiple starting lineups, and uh, you're right, credit. Uh, both these coaches are uh, getting these guys to this point right here and uh, for Clemson uh, They're playing with a sense of desperation uh, Joey Brackets. We had him on earlier what needs to happen for Clemson and You know certainly Brad Brownell knows the importance of this game to have momentum going into the ACC tournament and uh, We already put up their resume. We put it up against Rutgers. We put it up against Michigan. It stacks up uh, comparably and now uh, they have some work to do. It starts here tonight at home, but uh, certainly uh, in the ACC tournament, they're going to have to probably get one or two wins to get back into that bubble discussion. Alvarado gets them both after the foul on Dawes. Again, it's the strength of the quality wins. Duke, Louisville, Florida State, three teams that have legitimate Final Four aspirations and a legitimate chance of being the last team standing, period. Good ball movement here by Clemson. Into the corner, that rims out. And Newman able to sell the foul. And DeVoe knew it as soon as the whistle blew. He knew. Uh, he got pulled right into this one right here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Let's see right uh, he here. He uses the offhand, yeah, and Newman sold yeah, it well. Yeah, he did, and again, you can't get it up that high. Obviously, if that's around the waist area, then he's okay. Four on DeVoe. He remains in the game. Four and a half to go here in regulation. Newman at the other end, and the rebound by Cole. Well, that's two good looks from three for Clemson. Still just a seven-point game. Alvarado maneuvering inside. Might have taken an extra step. That's New York City driving, though. <laughs> you know how to get around. Uh, error with the shot clock. It reads 20. So they're going to fix the timing on the shot clock. Adding three seconds. 59-54. The Yellow Jackets led by 11 at the break. And we told you they blew double-digit halftime leads on the road this year at Syracuse and at Louisville. They do have a home win against Louisville, as does Clemson. Trap for three. Well off. Alvarado with the rebound and a foul down low against Georgia Tech. It's four on Alvarado. The backcourt for Georgia Tech. In foul trouble.
tomorrow, number one Kansas in Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. The Jayhawks can clinch yet another regular season Big 12 title. And then at six, North Carolina visiting Duke. Look out for the Tar Heels. Left for dead just a few weeks ago. They've won three straight, averaging 90 points per game in those wins. Josh Passner, a little while ago, upset at the officials. A couple of these fouls now have some consequences. Michael DeVoe has four, and Jose Alvarado has four. Yeah, and I think the big thing, as you see uh, Josh Passner continuing to work with uh, work on the referees, I think the biggest thing is it's Clemson's in a one-on-one situation right now, and uh, you're putting Sims at their free throw line for a couple of uh, chances at free throws to extend this lead. Front end of a one-and-one, one, rims out, banks the rebound. And for as poorly as Georgia Tech has played in the second half, two-possession game, plenty of time left. Yeah, a lot of missed opportunities uh, for Clemson. Some open threes that time, though, Sims uh, with the missed one-and-one. One. DeVoe does not get the bounce. And a foul down low on the floor against Clemson. Kevin Max second. And James Banks, a 63% free throw shooter to the line. One and one. Well, he's provided such a great uh, anchor to that Georgia Tech defense. Second uh, in the ACC in blocks per game, close to three. Georgia Tech does not lose a ton for next year. But Banks is the big loss, and a rim protector like James Banks, not easy to replace. No, not at all. And I like the what Georgia Tech has done to close this game out. They've gone through to the 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone. And How do you attack it? Right now, you got to get the ball to the high post or short corner area right there. And they do just that, and it's Mac on the baseline. Eight team for Mack. DeVoe, the basket, plus one. And DeVoe with a little flex. Uh, both he and Alvarado are so tough, they make up 40% of Georgia Tech's offense. Little jab step, split the defender. That's his great body control and finish. Little flex at the end. And he completes the three-point play. That's a big bucket and free throw for Georgia Tech. A two-point game, three minutes to go in regulation. Well, this is where having Amir Sims in that high post area is a, a key factor for Clemson. He's such a good passer. Mack against Alvarado. Size advantage. And Tevin Mack draws the foul, and that is five on Alvarado. He's done. Well, Tevin Mack, we couldn't see it from our angle. But it looks like he probably got Tevin Mack on the arm. Again, right here, Mack using his size. Oh. Now the original bump, I think you can call. Again, okay, he's in his body. It uh, didn't look right, like though, he got his arm on that one right there on the second. We've got pretty good seats. We've seen stuff much more egregious be a non-call tonight. Uh, absolutely. I would agree. That was uh, definitely right there one that I think uh, the referees missed. If you're not going to call the first bump, he certainly did not get him on the arm. One out of two. Georgia Tech can tie with a three. But the loss of Alvarado here down the stretch is huge. Well, if I'm Georgia Tech. And hey. Newman commits the foul on the region. His fourth. Michael DeVoe or put James Banks down in the block and let him go to work. Still plenty of time, so you don't need to hoist threes. And... Both teams in the double bonus.
Alvarado a moment ago was giving Bubba Parham his replacement instructions. He's very much the leader of this basketball team. Standing up on the bench right now. The young man who became a father last month. 62 60, 220 to go. Right now, Georgia Tech back and man to man. Trap in trouble. Newman looking for help. Sims against Banks. Trap for three. And Cole secures the rebound. An excellent block out and rebound. Josh Passner wants a timeout. Tech has one left, down to 151 to go. Shaping up for a fantastic finish here at Little John. Sports Center tonight, 1 a.m. Linda and Neil postgame from the Bucks and Lakers, plus the best of Giannis and LeBron. And it's Luca and Ja, young stars colliding tonight. Meanwhile, for Clemson, they're hoping their stars can align in Greensboro. They're going to have to make some kind of a run in the ACC tournament. If they win it all, they get the AQ. If they get deep enough, they're in the conversation on Selection Sunday. But if they lose tonight, they may have to win it all in Greensboro. I would agree with that. It obviously starts here tonight at home. Uh, before they head down to Greensboro. Uh, they've done a nice job in this game after the rocky start in the first half, uh, overcoming uh, really a sluggish start. Uh, they picked it up in the second half. Now they're going to have to close this one out. Uh, on the other side, uh, for Georgia Tech, uh, Michael DeVoe is still in the game. Jose Al Alvarado is fouled out, so I think uh, you're going to have to play through DeVoe or give James Banks a touch in the post. That's the challenge. Can Georgia Tech pull it off with Alvarado out of the game? They've got DeVoe. Banks on the follow, and we're tied at 62. Great work on the offensive glass that time by James Banks. Here's Newman against Banks. Denied. That's one of the best shot blockers in the ACC. Three blocks tonight for Banks. DeVoe in traffic. Almost turned it over again. He's had six turnovers tonight. Usher now. And the rebound to Sims. Well, if I'm Clemson right now, I'm putting Amir Sims in a high ball screen and then let him go to work on the throwback. Sims for the lead. Way off. About a seven-second differential between shot clock and game clock, and Josh Passner uses his final timeout. Well, on the last possession... Clemson went to a 1-2-2 zone uh, to negate, I think, the size uh, of Banks. But you have to credit James Banks right here, not giving up on the play, using his length. And he really took over uh, this last three-minute stretch. That's a big-time block. Not only the ability, again, to block the shot, but keep possession for his team. Again, a lot of times you see guys punch it in the stands. He has the court awareness to block the sock shot and then maintain possession for his team. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Alvarado, the heart and soul, the number one point guard on this team has fouled out. But Michael DeVoe is more than a capable ball handler. He's shown it all season. Come on. It appears DeVoe will inbound, but you get the sense it's going to end up in the hands of Agent Zero. Yeah, and I think uh, the key thing right now is is what defense Clemson plays. The last possession, uh, they went to a matchup 1-2-2 zone. Right now, it looks like they're in man-to-man. -man. DeVoe doubled on the perimeter. Skip pass to Usher. Tend to shoot. DeVoe down the lane, leaning in! 
Georgia Tech with the lead. Clemson has timeouts. And Brad Brownell will use one with his team down to 11.7 seconds to go. Michael DeVoe in his last 10 ACC games, 15 points a game he's averaging, shooting over 47% from the three-point line and over 50 from the floor. Big time finish right here. Floater in the lane when you need somebody to step up and get you a bucket. That is a luxury that Georgia Tech have, has. That's cool, calm, collected, and that's a big time floater to put your team on top by two. DeVoe has 20. 11.7 seconds to go for Clemson. This past weekend against Florida State, it was Alamir Dawes, the freshman who was the hero. Brad Brownell told me before the game, there's not one guy on this team. It could be anybody. So who's the guy tonight? Well, Amir Sims had a pretty good look on the last possession for Clemson. He just missed the three. I think you're putting either Trap or you're putting Dawes in a high screen situation with Sims and either throw back to Sims and play from there if you get a clean look. Obviously, you don't necessarily need a three, but I think that's the situation you want. Put James Bank Banks in a high ball screen situation and then let one of your guards try to go make a play, knowing though that you have the throwback option to Amir Sims. Tevin Mack has been the leading scorer tonight for Clemson. He's got 19 on senior night. Sims in double figures as well, along with Kern Scott. And here's the key, Anish. You cannot take too long to get into your offense if you're if you're Georgia Tech. I mean, excuse me, Clemson. And right now, Jamie Lucky. And Josh Passner nearly got too far out on the court. Dawes will inbound. Trap, Newman, Sims, and Mack on the floor. It's Mack. Asking for the clear out. Mack over Cole for the lead. And the rebound to Banks, and he's fouled. 3.8 seconds to go. Well, a couple things on that play. Number one, it's not a clear or clean three off a of ball movement or penetrate kick. I think also they took too long to get into their offensive set. And you don't need a three in that situation. Again, you're in a bonus situation. Uh, I'd rather have somebody, if it's just a one -on, clear one-on-one, -on -one, trying to drive to the basket. But uh, really, the play took really too long to develop. Again, you can see right here, Mack waving off. Again, that's a tough uh, three in that situation. Banks a 63% free throw shooter. And he makes the first. And here's the big one to make it a two-possession game. Now, if he misses... And we'll get a timeout from Brad Brownell. Clemson still has another timeout. If Banks misses, do you foul if you're Georgia Tech up by three? Well, I think it depends on the situation. If how much time it takes to get the ball. So if it's a clear miss, you got a guy running up. That situation, I don't trust guys taking a foul at the half court line where somebody's going into their shooting motion. If it's down here, there's two or three dribbles, absolutely you foul right away because now you're talking about two ticks, or potentially three ticks going off the clock. So, again, it's how much do you trust your team to make that decision? Uh, but certainly, uh, I think it's going to be a strategy uh, that we're going to have to watch, in particular if Banks misses this. But I like fouling in that situation before half court. Anything above half or, or, or beyond half court, I think you play it out. If Banks makes it, it's a lot easier on Josh Pastner. Missed it. Clemson the rebound, and the Tigers use their final timeout, 3.1 seconds to go. So now the question, do you foul? Again. Three seconds. In the backcourt, yes. If they advance the ball to the front court, I think you play it out. 
hands up and you make somebody hit a deep contested three. But the key thing is you can't foul in that situation. So if Clemson's going to inbound the ball and it goes into the backcourt, one dribble, foul. Two dribbles, foul. If they somehow get the ball up beyond half court with either a pass or one dribble, then absolutely I think you play it out. But uh, we're going to see what strategy that Josh Fastner uh, comes up with here. It looks like in that situation they weren't going to foul uh, in the backcourt. VCU Davidson follows our game. This is Georgia Tech's final game of the season. They dropped their appeal for a postseason ban on Monday. No ACC tournament, no postseason of any kind. If the Yellow Jackets hold on, they'll have 11 wins in conference, the most since the 96-led Marbury team. Clemson can get to 500 in league play and get some needed momentum heading into the ACC tournament. But they're down three, inbounding underneath their own basket. 3.5 seconds. Down court. Sims has it. Over to Mack for the tie. No! And Georgia Tech closes out its season with a road win at Clemson. Wow. Not a bad look or play by Clemson. Home run play. Amir Sims comes up, makes a pass. You can tell it was obviously a... A well executed in terms of the strategy. Long pass. Tevin Mack got a look. Not a clean one, but it's a look. And what a performance, though, by Georgia Tech. A credit Josh Pastner getting his team ready to play. Again, we talked about no postseason for them this year. Uh, but they came up with some big shots, uh, none bigger than Michael DeVoe's runner in the lane. Georgia Tech secures its first winning season in conference play since the 2004 season. That 04 team played in the national championship. For Clemson, they now stagger into the ACC tournament. Two straight losses. They're going to have to win out in Greensboro if they want to go dancing.